In this video, we're going to look at the summing amplifier. I will start by drawing an inverting amplifier because the summing amplifier is based on that. There's our output. Non-inverting input goes to ground. Feedback resistor. Input resistor. And there is our typical inverting amplifier. To make this a summing amplifier, all I have to do is add another resistor and another input. We now have a summing amplifier. Let's take a look at how it works. Just to make the calculations easy, let's make them 1K resistors. And let's see how this works. So we'll start by putting in plus 2 volts and plus 3 volts. Let's see what the output is. Since this is a summing amplifier, I would assume that the output is going to be 5 volts. Let's find out. Okay, we have the non-inverting input grounded, so that's going to be 0 volts here. And of course, the output will be whatever it takes to make the other input also 0 volts. To understand the summing amplifier, we have to examine the currents flowing through the different resistors. We have 0 volts here, 2 volts here, 3 volts there. So we have 2 volts across 1 kilo ohm. That is going to give us a current of 2 milliamps flowing up into that resistor. Here we have 3 volts and 1K, therefore we will have 3 milliamps flowing through that resistor. So we have 3 milliamps going this way, 2 milliamps going that way. Where does that 3 milliamps go? Well, they all go to the same point here. Now we have to remember our Kirchhoff's current law, which says that the total current flowing out of this node will equal the total current flowing in. So we have 3 milliamps going in, 2 milliamps going in. So coming out, remember, no current flows into the op amp, so all of that current has to flow through this 1K resistor. So 3 milliamps plus 2 milliamps. Kirchhoff's current law says that will add up to 5 milliamps. So now we have 5 milliamps going through 1K. How many volts will that give us? Across that resistor, we will have 5 volts. All right, so we started with 3 volts, and we went down to 0. So our conventional current is flowing this direction. Therefore, our voltage goes down as we go this direction. If we lost 3 volts, we lost 2 volts. No matter what we did, we got down to 0 volts. So now we're going to lose 5 more volts, making this minus 5 volts at this point, which is our output, minus 5 volts, which is the sum. Now. Since it's an inverting amplifier, we do get a change in sign. So if we need to have the same polarity, we will have to have a second inverting amplifier to re-invert the voltage, but that's only if we need it. Of course, this amplifier will have to be supplied by two power supplies, which sets the limit to how much of an input we can have. We can have as many inputs as we want. If we want another input, we just add another equal resistor. A summing amplifier is the same circuit that you might use for a microphone mixer, in which case we would have variable resistors here. A type of digital to analog converter is made with a summing amplifier where we have different resistors that give us different amounts of current that are proportional to the binary number on each one of the resistors, and therefore we end up with a voltage that is proportional to the digital number coming on the input. But we'll talk about that in digital circuits and digital to analog converters in another video. Let's take another look at this with some different voltages and see if it uh, works under some other conditions. Let's remove these currents and our voltages. Clean up our circuit here. Let's try plus 2 volts and minus 3 volts. Hmm, is that still going to give us a sum? Well, let's see, plus 2 minus 3, that should give us negative 1 volt. So let's see if that works. Here we have 2 volts across 1K. Currents flowing that direction, that's going to give us 2 milliamps. Here the current's going to be flowing the opposite direction. So we're going to get 3 milliamps flowing the opposite way. 
So we have 3 milliamps flowing this way, 2 milliamps flowing that way. Therefore, we must have 1 milliamp flowing that direction, conventional current, out of the output through this resistor. So if we have 0 volts here, 1 milliamp, we're going against the conventional current, so we're going to gain voltage. Let's get rid of this 5 volts here. So we're going against our conventional current, so therefore we will gain voltage. 1 milliamp th going through 1K is going to give us a gain of 1 volt. So we end up with plus 1 volt here. So the difference should be minus 1, but of course, once again, it's an inverting amplifier, so we end up with a plus 1 on the end. So once again, we do get the sum of these two voltages. This might look a little bit confusing because, wait, wait a second, uh, how, how, where's that 3 milliamps coming from if we only have 1 milliamp coming out of the amplifier? Well, uh, that doesn't matter. If, what we see is the node here, Kirchhoff's current law, we see 1 milliamp flowing in this way, 2 milliamps flowing in this way, those 3 milliamps go into the node and all flow back out through that input. So the circuit works as expected.